what is going on guys it is david here and today i am bringing you another video on what's going on in the world of crossfit it's been a while since we've done a this week in crossfit but i thought it was necessary especially because i'm waiting on some new products to come in there's been a really cool change that took place this week so i thought we would go ahead jump in that toss up uh, some videos for you guys it is pretty late so i'm going to be cranking out a bunch of videos for you guys this week uh today i'm sipping on a little cat and cloud steeped coffee if you've never had that before make sure to go try that they're pretty cheap too pretty affordable it's two bucks a bag this isn't like an ad or anything like that. I just really love their coffee. And you guys know that I love coffee. So take my recommendation. You'll appreciate it. I'm gonna make them an offer I can't refuse. So if you guys did not hear the news this last week, uh, Greg Klassman officially announced on Arm & Hammer's interview that there would no longer be a restriction on what footwear an athlete can wear at the CrossFit Games. Oh my God! Wow! Now, this is super dope, and this is something that I have been really, really uh, waiting for because I think it's just gonna be good for the entire industry. This is something that I've been um, talking about. I've been exp I've expressed my interest, or not expressed my interest, but I've uh, given my perspective that um, it's been pretty limiting for athletes, especially for them to create some sort of way to create a profession out of the sport. Um, a lot of deals or a lot of ways that athletes can make a living is through shoe sales. It's with any sport. I mean, you've got skateboarding, basketball, soccer, um, football, um, baseball. You know, athletes that have shoe deals tend to make a little bit more money. Make it rain all day long. My name is Floyd. My name is Floyd. My name is Money May. Well, now, whether or not those shoes sell, that's a whole nother ball game, but it gives you the option to make more money. And so, with Reebok restricting athletes, it's really put a damper on the growth of the industry as far as uh, other brands coming in and being able to help to innovate, to push technology, to really. Uh, be a driving force and so I'm I've, I'm really excited about this I think this is probably uh, one of the biggest news that we have this year this is super dope um, previously if you're unaware um, athletes were able to wear whatever they want obviously during the open as well as during regionals uh, but I guess in 2014 is when uh, that was stipulated by Reebok that wasn't in the original uh, contract that was outlined between CrossFit and Reebok which it's smart Reebok wanted to um, be first to market they wanted to be the ones to be the uh, gatekeepers for crossfit as far as apparel and footwear and things like that um, but over the last few years we've obviously seen the relationship between both brands uh, definitely start to degrade um, so obviously over the last year obviously over the last uh, few years we've been seeing some uh, just degradation in regard to the relationship between both brands and so um, I think it makes sense um, that this is happening I think uh, this year I think next year is the end of the official contract between the exclusive exclusivity exclusive contract between Reebok and CrossFit after that um, who knows who the title sponsor will be but hopefully we'll get somebody else to come in to be the title sponsor maybe it'll be Nike maybe it'll be Under Armour maybe it'll be Innovate who knows um, but I think this is a really big milestone in regards to the growth of the community um, we need to see more brands I mean that's the biggest thing uh, we're definitely an underserved uh, sport and underserved market I mean yes we have you know Reebok Nike um, and uh, Adidas that you know make weightlifting shoes and CrossFit shoes, but we need more brands to step into the market and to really provide shoes that are functionally um, sound that are that are great for CrossFit. Because if you create a shoe that's perfect for CrossFit, it's going to be perfect for any other type of training. Whether you're not your whether you're a bodybuilder, whether you're um, a runner, maybe it won't be the best running shoe, but it'll be something that's great for somebody who. Um, just goes to the gym and wants to do a little bit of everything so this is a really really important um, update in regards to uh, changes to this format or this year's next year's format of the CrossFit Games with this update um, Reebok will still be the apparel sponsor for the games so athletes will still be 
wearing um, a, a Reebok uniforms and stuff like that, which is fine. That's perfect. I mean, their apparel is not really terrible. I mean, their shoes aren't bad, especially the Nano 8. Now, another reason why this is a big um, opportunity for brands and businesses to step into this market is because of the fact that um, also in terms of numbers, there was uh, about 10 million viewers who viewed the CrossFit Games last year. I believe it was last year on uh, Facebook. So in terms of advertising, advertisers are going to be willing to spend to get their products, their brand in front of people that are watching the CrossFit Games, which again, it kind of goes more for, um, you know, to support people that are creating products and creating businesses around the sport of fitness. This is something that has been long overdue. I'm not really sure why um, CrossFit Inc. was willing to allow Reebok to create that initial stipulation because, um, again, uh, this year we're seeing the foundation being laid for the expansion and growth for the platform of CrossFit. And this is going to be, again, good for everybody. So obviously Nike is probably going to be the biggest benefactor in this whole situation, which it's okay and it's fine. But um, I'm really excited to see what potential uh, pro model shoes we're going to see from these other athletes. I mean, what if Noah Olsen got his own pro model shoe or got to design his own shoe, which that probably won't be likely just because of the way that Nike operates. If you look at a lot of their other um, sport teams, like for example, um, their skateboarding team and very few athletes actually have their own pro model for example you have stefan janowski who has his own pro model you have eric costin who has his pro own pro model you have um paul rodriguez who has his own pro model and that's pretty much it typically people get different colorways so nike it might be a little bit more different but again we'll start to see more development of um different models of shoes come out to athletes specifications um, with other brands that might be different for example with innovate maybe we'll see more um, uh, pro models for innovate athletes um, I know um, I don't even know who's on um, innovate because they're so irrelevant to say the least but uh, again um, it, it creates incentive for these companies to create products with that being said what brands are you looking forward to seeing new shoes from? Um, there's a lot of different brands out there that are going to start popping up. Um, I hope uh, brands like um, Strike Movement will put more time and development into creating better shoes. I hope brands like Under Armour are going to be creating more shoes. Uh, maybe we'll get a Crocs CrossFit shoes shoe who knows let me know down below again as usual guys what shoes or what brands are you looking um, or hoping will expand into the uh, crossfit market um yeah let's have that conversation down below um this is going to be a short video this week just to give you guys a little update on what's going on got some dope stuff coming for you guys soon so make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button as usual guys as always may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black this is david and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.